If you're a photographer, you probably edit on programs like Lightroom, Capture One, Photoshop. But if you're a hobbyist who doesn't make money from photography, or maybe you just started out in this industry, it can be hard to justify paying a monthly subscription just to edit your photos. And so I just recently stumbled upon this alternative to Lightroom that might just be a good option for you, for beginners out there. And yes, it's completely free. Darktable is an open source photo editing software made by photographers like you and I. Photographers can actually contribute to the build of this software by suggesting features and reporting problems, which is pretty awesome. At first glance, this software looks pretty similar to Lightroom with a lot of the same features, same windows, you can even tether directly to it. Now, like I said, I just found this program, but I did have a little bit of time to test it out and try some of its features to make this video for you. So I'm gonna import a photo here and kind of edit it similar to how I would edit in Lightroom or any other editing software. We'll talk about some of its features and how to get started in Darktable because it does have a big learning curve. When you first open Darktable, you gotta change the interface color. Something about it just looks horrible and just makes everything confusing. Trust me, if you go into your settings and change the theme to a darker one, you'll have a much better experience. Importing into Darktable is pretty much the same as Lightroom. We'll go up to the top here and click on add to library and just choose our photos. Once our photos are imported, you have the same sort of culling process as Lightroom, being able to scroll through all the photos using the one to five keys on your keyboard to give them a star rating. Double clicking on any photo will bring you into our editing workspace where we can actually start making our adjustments. So on the right here, you'll see all of our modules or tools and there's a lot here. Like I almost wanna say more than Lightroom. This is the tab view or setup I would recommend you stay in all the time. And basically it's the one where you can see all of your adjustments at the same place. To get there, just click on the tab you're currently on. If you click on the three sliders button here, this is our quick access panel. The confusing thing about this panel is that you don't have all those adjustments anymore. It's almost like a dumbed down version of each adjustment. So for example, if we scroll down to our white balance here, we can only adjust the temperature and tint, but what if I wanna set my white balance by selecting a white point with my eyedropper tool. Well, you have to actually go into the technical tab here, scroll down to white balance, and now you have the eyedropper option. So I definitely recommend avoiding the quick access tab and just work within the technical grading and effects window. Or again, go into the view where you can see everything. Now, if you find that you only use a handful of tools or it's still pretty confusing, you can actually create your own tab or view or workspace. All you have to do is click on the hamburger looking button here, click on manage presets, go up to new, and then create your own preset. You can change or remove the existing groups, create your own groups with different tools, or do what I did and create one with all the tools that are essential to me. Then go back up to the hamburger button and choose the custom workspace you just made. As you can tell, our photo looks absolutely horrible, like even worse than it did before we imported it. And that's because Darktable processes raw photos differently than these other editing softwares. I kid you not, it took me almost two days of editing to achieve a result that actually looks decently good. So let me show you this, that way you're not wasting your time. The easiest way I found to take it back to a neutral looking state is like this. I found that dialing in your exposure and your white balance to be pretty helpful. Then go into the color balance RGB model module, click on the hamburger button here and choose add color colorfulness legacy. This will add a bit of saturation our image was missing. And actually, because we're still in there, let's go down to the brilliance adjustment here and just increase it in our highlights and the midtones. This gives us a little bit more contrast. Now we just need to bring in some additional contrast and to do that, we're gonna make a slight S curve using our curve adjustment and make sure that preserve color setting is set to none. Then go into our contrast, brightness and saturation module and play around with these. Increase the contrast, increase the saturation if you need to. 
Lastly, we're gonna go back to exposure and just dial this in to where we want it. If you wanna reset any adjustment at any time, just click on this button right here. And if you wanna reset the entire photo, just go over to your history tab on the left here and click the same button. And there you go, all of that work for a neutral looking photo. We're finally at the stage where our photo looks decent and it's time for color grading. I'd recommend saving all of what we just did as a style by clicking on this create a style button in our history tab, name it whatever you want. That way we don't have to do all that work for every photo. Just import a new photo, click on the styles button at the bottom here and choose a preset we just created. The one thing I have noticed is that this program is extremely slow. Now, I'm not talking slow like back when we were trying to run Photoshop on an old Toshiba satellite, but it is noticeably slow. I'm not sure if they have support for M1 and M2 chips, but I'm running this on my brand new 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M2 Pro chip and it's slow. Like. This laptop hasn't given me any performance issues in any program, it's super quick, runs Lightroom, Photoshop, DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, all at once like a beast, but then I come to Darktable and it's just absolutely horrible. It's actually the first time I've ever heard the fan come on on this laptop. I'm gonna do some spot healing to this photo here just to get rid of some of the makeup texture. So we'll zoom in here and Darktable actually has a retouching module where we'll find our spot healing tool. We'll choose the brush tool and just paint over these. Now, the very first time I did this, the Darktable app actually crashed. So hopefully that doesn't happen now. Let's go back to the original in our history tab here. Click on take snapshot. Then we're gonna click on our snapshot to show you the before and after. Wow, look at that difference. It looked absolutely horrible before and now the after just looks 10 times better. Now, like I said, Darktable is a free alternative to Lightroom. So even though it does have a ton of adjustments and modules, it doesn't have any AI tools. So we don't have any subject or background masking like we have in Lightroom, Avoto AI, or Photoshop, but we do still have masks. Under almost every adjustment, you'll notice masking options. To use them, just click on the pencil button here and then choose a masking shape. If you want to add another adjustment to the same mask, just do the same thing, but instead of choosing a new shape, click on the drop down menu here where it says no mask used and select the mask that we created with the first adjustment. Now, if you are looking for a super powerful editing software with amazing AI features and masking, I'd highly recommend watching the video I made on Avoto AI. It'll be somewhere up here. But overall, I think Darktable is a decent program. Aside from the UI looking old and out of date, the way it processes RAWs is horrendous and it being pretty slow, it's still a great option with a ton of powerful features for photographers. It's definitely not perfect and Sure, it could be better, but it's also free. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know what you think about Darktable down below. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one.